In Scotland, Storm Frank is lashing down. 80 mile per hour winds have caused a river near the town of Daly in South Ayrshire to burst its banks. Within hours, the roads have turned to rapids. A bus is almost completely submerged and it's filling up with freezing cold water. Alan is one of the 12 passengers on board. It didn't just trickle in. It just rushed straight in the bus. Within a couple of seconds, it was a couple of feet high, level with the, with the seat. There was no idea just how far it was going to go. The power of the rising water has picked the bus up and thrown it off the road. Local radio presenter Stevie is filming as the disaster unfolds. If the trees hadn't been there, the force of the water would probably have catapulted the bus sideways and caused it to roll down the embankment, and it would have been a totally different story then. It was the biggest emergency service presence that we've probably ever seen. Everywhere you looked, there was blue lights. The relentless flood water continues to hammer into the side of the bus. I've never seen a river run so fast in all my life. People were shouting and a few screams. The water kept rising. You stood in the chair and then it wasn't high enough. Then you had to stand on the headrest and it still seemed to keep rising until I think eventually it stopped maybe a bit chest height. Alan and his fellow passengers, some of whom are children, are in serious danger of drowning in the freezing cold water. The emergency services can't get to them, but soon help arise from above. You hear the noise of the Royal Navy Sea King helicopter in the distance, and you, you suddenly kind of stop and go, OK, now it's serious. Lieutenant Commander Martin Lanny is struggling with the helicopter in the ferocious storm. The worst thing for us was the wind, which was just incredibly strong, even by Scottish standards, 60 mile an hour average winds. I've done 500 odd rescues over the years, and that's some of the hardest flying I think any of us have ever done. Martin surveys the desperate situation below. If that bus had rolled over into the river, this, this would not have been a rescue, this would have been body recovery. The crew gets straight to work. They'll need to act fast. Light is fading and they're running out of fuel. We were on our third flood-related rescue of that day. So we knew we were going to take this thing right down to the wire, uh, literally down to vapor in the tanks, uh, to get every person we could off before we had to quit. The atrocious conditions are not the only hazard the crew need to be wary of. The most challenging part of the whole rescue was getting our rescue instrument on the end of the wire in and out of that bus safely. As the winch wire goes through the tree branches, we were just concerned it would possibly snag, and if it really got tangled up, it might snap. Passengers on the bus who were in really a tough enough state, they don't want to have to worry about the winch wire snapping and falling into that river, which was almost certainly a death sentence. Finally, the crew begin to lift the passengers inch by inch to safety. When the first person was airlifted from the bus, you had members of the crowd cheering, and so a, a sense of relief and a lot of sighs throughout the crowd going, finally, they were getting them off. But then disaster strikes. So the winch man uh, went down for the second lift, and this did not go 100% as planned because he was dragged down by the force of the water. At that point, his life was probably in the balance, let alone the people on the bus. Relentless storms are causing havoc over Britain. Storm Frank is well and truly at its peak here now. River levels are continuing to rise. Gale force winds and torrential rain continue to hammer down as the country endures one of its wettest winters ever. In the village of Daly in Scotland, a Royal Navy helicopter is attempting to rescue 12 passengers stranded on a bus, submerged in freezing cold water. Alan is on board. People were shouting and a few screams. The water kept rising. But the helicopter crew were struggling in the severe weather. The winch man is in the water, and the current has dragged him under. If anyone had gone in that water and they weren't attached to some sort of safety line, like this guy was attached to our rescue winch, he was gone, never to be seen again. So at that point, his life was probably in the balance, let alone the people on the bus. The fast-thinking crew pull in the cable, and the winch man reappears from under the surface. He immediately 
Gave the thumbs up. Very brave. Didn't need to come back to the helicopter for a rest. He was happy to just re-attack and get back onto the bus again. With the light now gone, it takes 90 minutes to rescue all the passengers and deliver them to safe ground. It's been a terrifying experience for Alan. A few feet more, or even if those trees weren't there, it came to rest up against the night, but that would have been washed away, and there's a good chance we'd all been dead on the bus. A shock even to guys like us who've done many rescues that just how tough that day was. Now, jail isn't meant to be a walk in the park, but when gangs run the show, it's a different story. New next on Channel 5, Paul Connolly shares a cell with a murderer inside another of the world's toughest prisons. That's after the five news headlines in just a tick.